Hey guys, well, this is the bare bones or basics of Python. So, right now, I expect that you have Visual Studio Code. If you don't, the link is in the description for downloading it. Also, you have to make sure that you have Python. The, the, link, for, the link for the download is, is in the description below. I'll explain how to download it right I'm going to explain how to do it right now. Okay, so to download uh, the Python, the Python itself, you have to write p y t write python dot o r g. Press enter. Now, if you wrote it in the search bar like in the one in the middle then you have to click on the first one or if you if you wrote it up there up here then you have to then just press enter and you'll go into the website so now you're on python.org so now hover over downloads i'm expecting you're on windows and now and now it'll say download for windows make sure that that the first digit is not a two if it is, then then make, then find the latest download that that has a three right the, as the first number. Okay, now you click on that. You have to wait for it to download. Then then you just have to click on it again. Then it would then it will then a pop up. Then an application would appear. You just click next, wait for it to download whenever it needs to, then just press finish. And and also do the same thing for Visual Studio Code. So now, anyways, back to Visual Studio. Okay, so I hope you know how to open Notepad because I'm not going to show you. But open Notepad. Now write whatever you want to here. Alright. That, all right then. now you have to press x on windows now this pop-up will appear you have to press save now now this will come up make sure that save a, a pop-up will come now make sure that save as type is all files now put whatever the file name you want it to be i'll put it as that Now make sure that there's a dot .py before it. I mean after it. Dot .py is the most important thing part. And now you'll see a lot of folders if you if you actually you if you use Windows a lot. And then on the side there's this area and you can select where you want your file to be. Make sure that you know where it is. Now press save. Okay, so now, since you've seen how to make a Python file, now, go back to Visual Studio Code. Now, you're here, right? Go to File, Open File, or Control O. Now, a pop-up will appear, and now click on the file we just created. Click on the file you just created with Notepad. That's why you needed to remember where it is. And now press open. Now you've opened your Python file. Now let's get to the simple stuff. So now, get rid of the text you wrote there. And now you have to write print. Parentheses. You can put double quotation or normal quotations. Double quotations are used for words or for sentences that are like that have like the, those compressed like that is the the one word type of that is like the one with the ones that have that one um, line you you have to use the double here for it so now. Write whatever you want to in there. While I write this. And now, what print is saying 
is that to the computer, if we press run here, then print is telling the computer that when we that when we run this program, you must you have to show what's inside inside of these quotation marks, double or normal. And I'll write hello world. Now, what do you expect to come in inside? In what do you expect for the program to say to print? I'll give you ten seconds. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. If you figure it out, good job. If you didn't, you're lazy. Now we'll press run. Now, right here it says hello world. If your answer was hello world, then you're correct. If it wasn't, I literally explained it to you. Can you actually please think a bit more? So now, it says that. It says hello world. You can say anything in here. I can say... I can say that. And it would pop up here. See? would pop up. So now, alright. And now, make sure that you're on the end here, and press enter. So now, we'll, we'll move on to input. Guess what input does? It get, it make, it gives the, it makes an input, it, it gives the player an input area. Smart you. Input. Do it, put the syntax almost exactly the same, only with print to be swapped with input. You can write. And like, I can write. Are you good? And now here, it, it would it would give the player an area to write whatever you, they want to. So now, input pretty much tells the computer, okay, listen up. The player is gonna gonna be able to talk, gonna be able to respond to whatever you wanted to respond to when you run the application. Press, you press run. How are you? Are you good? Yes. Now I press. Now it gave me an area, as you saw. So now let's move on to variables. So let's make a variable called Bob. Bob is alive. Make sure that whenever you're writing text, not. If you're writing text, make sure that you have double quotations, only double quotations in front, and make sure that whatever you've wrote in, written is inside these double quotations. So now, but not but numbers don't have don't have to do that. So now Bob is alive. Now we're gonna use print. How do you expect it it to work? You would expect it to do this. What, Bob? But watch what happens. So variables are right now the the word alive is assigned to Bob. That means if I say Bob, it would print alive, right? Right? Well then let's see. It would why is it wait, what why is it only saying Bob? It's supposed to say alive. That's because if you if you put if you put these double quotations or normal quotations, it would always print only what's inside of those that. For variables, you have to write the, the name itself inside of the parentheses only. Now, it said, it said Bob that time. Now it says alive. I can do the same thing here. Like, I can do this. Bob is, and now we just move, and now we press that. 
Bob is alive. Now, if we change Bob in, if we put Bob is dead, it would change. So, variables are useful. So, let's say you have like multi thousand lines of code and you didn't make a variable. And like in every, and you had oh, like 10,000 of the same number, it would be a pain in the back to, to change all that if you made a mistake. But variables change that. You just change the whatever you assigned the what whatever that the object is in so you would just change this for example how i just changed it like a better example we just it like it's useful when you're doing big projects you would change it once and then everything would change instantly so that's variables now after variables, we're going to move on to is if statements. So, if statements are, will work, work like this. So, first we're going to create a variable of column var1. var1 equals... Now, actually, you can do this. So let's call this var1 equals, you can put, you can put like print or for, you can put print, print or, so inside of variables, you can assign things like, like, for example, print hello world, and then you just write print var1, and then you would print hello world. You can do that a mil you can put that a lot of times and then all of a sudden you have like a, a lot of hello world. So that means you can that means you can do this. Input. Now parentheses. Now you press the double quotation or single quotation. So now it's input R oh wait, one sec. Let me just think of it. Are you happy? Now, well, now, whenever you answer, I can do this. Are you happy? Now, if statements work like this. If var1 equals 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 do not mess these up this is only the well, only one is for assigning a variable is for assigning this is for checking if it's if it is equal to whatever it is is equal to yes make sure that you do this Oof. now watch wait also don't forget here after if statements you have to put a colon and now we'll print that that's good and now else statements else statements have to be on the same level as if statements if you skip if you skip a line you'll usually come right here but you have to delete that you have to backspace and you'll go back to the start here and now if you write else now i would say print Print. 
this is just one example. Now, what do you expect will happen? Run. Are you happy? Yes. That's good. It says that's good right there, as you can tell. It functioned properly. Print that. That's good. That's what we specified. Now we run it again. Are you happy? I say, for example, no. Be and now we'll say be happy now. You, I'm happy now, and I specified that right here. But if you if you want something, if you want exact results instead of like else, if someone just says something really random, you can write if if um, var one equals equals equals. No. Don't forget. Oh yeah, and also there is a there's something called or, which means that you can do multiple things. It's like sort of a, ri a list. No. Or, no. No. I say any one of these, it would print that. Also, I forgot that. I forgot to pull. Now, now I'll just say else. Run it. What do you expect? Are you happy? I'll say no. Wait, what? One second. Okay, never mind. You don't. I'm not. I'm not gonna do that right now. I'll do that after. Oh, well. Well, I just. I'm just showing you an example. So now. I'm gonna write here. Are you happy? Yes. Okay. I'm gonna delete that. Never mind. Else you can do on your own. Are you happy? Yes. That's good. Now I rerun it. No. Be happy now. You, I'm happy now. Okay, it runs exactly the same. That's it. That's our statements. And so that would be the end of the video. Remember to like and subscribe. I hope this helped you a bit with your coding skills. So bye.